Hello again. Um, so this is the next in the little mini series I'm doing of uh, Get Drawing. And uh, I thought I'd do something a little bit more practical to follow up on last um, video's more general sort of advice about how to think about drawing and why you're drawing in the first place. Um, what I'm holding in my hands here is uh, a little bronze of Diana, Diana the Huntress, goddess of the moon by a uh, 19th century French sculptor, Alexander Falguier, who was the tutor to um, Rodin, no less. Um, I inherited this off my father, who's half French, um, and it's been with me all through my life and I absolutely cherish it. So I thought I'd do a few drawings of it, um, just to kind of show you the different ways that one can approach drawing. Um, let's have a look and see what I got up to. So I set up uh, Diana on her pedestal and made sure the lighting is good and the background is uh, unobtrusive. So I'm good to go. So here are the uh, tools that I'm going to be using. I'm going to start off with the uh, Uniball waterproof roller ball. I'll talk about that in a minute. Then I'll follow up with the Conti crayon that's in a wooden holder and the tortillon is just simply a French name for the blending tool that we're going to use and then I've also got um, a very nice pencil it's probably my favorite um, color Caput Mortem look it up very interesting background to that color um, and this is made by Faber Castell it gives a beautiful soft line that comes up third there'll be links in the descriptions as to where you can buy these certainly if you're UK based but you can get them internationally no problem. So here I'm going to attempt um, a crisp line drawing with no tone at all. What I'm thinking about here is purely uh, contour and interval. So what I mean by interval are little gaps between each line that actually by breaking them up you kind of suggest volume. Um, you'll see that around where the the shoulder, the left shoulder is meeting the jaw, the lines don't join up there. Yeah. So with this style of drawing it's what you leave out and it's it's those little intervals that um, actually help to describe volume just by line. I'm not particularly happy with how I did the lower eyelids here but uh, you have to commit, you have to go in and you get the drawing that results. Now I'm using the Uniball again, but this time I'm going in, drawing a little bit faster, and uh, I'm going to be using cross hatching here to describe the volume. It will build up tone gradually, um, following the contours, sometimes just uh, laying parallel lines over repeatedly until you, you build up the shape of the, uh, the object you're drawing. All these clips have been speeded up so you can see the drawing evolve, but um, if you want to watch how it happens slower, then, then just adjust that in the YouTube playback settings. The ink line of the roller ball isn't for everyone. Um, there's no place to hide with it. Uh, as you draw, you must draw with speed and with confidence. Um, and um, by all means, give it a go. But other media may suit you better. Now here's one that you can actually work into and work with as you'll see in this drawing. This is a sepia lead in a, a nice wooden holder. Again the link is in the uh, description there for you. And this works well for me. I love to lay down tone in this way so I'm, I'm basically sketching out uh, the initial um, markers if you like of uh, the, the, the features of the head. And then you'll see, see me just laying in the broad air, areas of tone as we go. Not doesn't look very sophisticated and it won't really look like that for a while. But what you're doing is just basically distributing um, amounts of, uh, amounts of the, 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 pig, the pigment over the paper, roughly in the areas that you actually want to then refine them. Yeah. So it's starting to take shape. But the... The tool isn't sharp, so you know you, you, you're laying down in an almost painterly way, in a sense. So, what when it really starts coming together is with this tool called a tortillon, 
um, which is just basically a posh blending tool. It sounds better in French, doesn't it? But uh, here you can see I'm just basically referring back to the to the bronze all the time, looking how the light's falling on it, and then pushing the uh, the, the pigment around on the paper, cleaning it up somewhat, and uh, it's starting to come together, I think. And then I'm just using a, a, a brush there as I dust away some of the uh, little areas that I, I, I'm lifting off with an eraser, yeah, just to add some lighter tone in. And then you can go back in with a tortillon and then blend those areas so they don't look so harsh. I hope this is making sense. When I do further videos, I'll try and get different angles over the drawing as well so you can see, uh, see a little bit more of what's going on um, from, from different perspectives. And then drawings like this always give a coat of fixative at the end. So from the severity of the uh, rollerball, the ink line, and then the almost painterliness of the Conte, there's a happy medium here, if you forgive the pun, of uh, this pencil, one of my favourites, uh, from Faber-Castell, which is an oil-based pencil. And the colour of this pigment I'm using is called Caput Mortem. And as I mentioned, it's got a long and quite sinister history to it when you've got an idle minute look it up on the web very interesting but it is a beautiful color to use i use it in oil paint as well for various um, color mixing effects it's beautiful um, so here it's i say it's a happy medium because what you're seeing evolve here is a sort of combination of the, of the two skills i was using and with the, with the the roller ball and with the with with the wooden lead holder so it's quite a quite a nice way of capturing tone in this way very methodical nice peaceful sort of uh, process of laying down tone and building it up gradually i'm not going to blend this at all I, li I like the mark that this pencil makes and uh, one doesn't want everything smudged all over the place i think that 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 can look if it's not done with care it can look rather sloppy so it's much better just to see the uh, the marks laid down in one go using this uh, approach. Now, none of these drawings here I'm presenting as um, uh, to you as uh, great examples. I mean, they're they're, they're okay, but um, what I'm trying to do here is show you maybe the different speed that's required, the different thinking mechanisms behind the the tools and how they affect the finished result. It's a starting point for you. Um, and I I, found, <laughs> I did find it quite hard actually. Although a camera is an inert object, it was quite hard to be filmed while I was drawing. I was a bit distracted. Um, but I'll probably probably get more relaxed about that I think in the future. So here are all four final drawings, um, the rollerball on the left, then the hatched rollerball drawing. Then third along there is the uh, Conte crayon in the lead holder. And then last but not least, the oil-based pencil, the Caput Mortem coloured uh, drawing there. So um, I hope this helps, I hope this inspires you to go off and um, do your own drawing and um, you know crack on and experiment I'd love to see what happens if I do a few more drawings from Diana here um, she's looked down on me in the studio for many many a decade and I think it's about time I acknowledged her <laughs>